Hey, what's up guys? KSK here. Welcome back to another video. In this video, I will show you how to dual boot the latest version of Fedora 34, which comes with a GNOME 40 along the side with a Windows 10. Now, this guide is one of the safest ways to set up a dual boot on any PC or laptop without any data loss. Also, at the end of this video, I will show how to remove a Fedora 34 safely from a dual boot if in case you don't like it. So do not skip this video or any step and make sure to watch the video until the end to avoid any confusion. Now keep in mind, this method is exclusive to UEFI users. For those who are using a UEFI or GPT combination on the existing desktop PC or laptop, then this method works flawlessly. Now as per my testing, if you follow this video carefully, you will be able to successfully dual boot your PC or laptop with Fedora 34. For legacy BIOS MBR users, stay tuned, I will post another video in the upcoming days. So make sure to subscribe to this channel and turn on the bell icon to receive the post notifications. Now to check your computer or laptop using a legacy BIOS or UEFI, type msinfo32 inside the run dialog box. Then under the BIOS mode, it says the status of your computer. Now in my case, my system uses the UEFI or GPT layout. The prerequisites of this video, you need a Windows 10 running on your PC or laptop. Next, you need an 8 gigs or higher USB drive to create a bootable disk with Fedora 34. And lastly, you need to reserve a free space of about a 30 GB or higher from your existing drive. That being said, moving into a step number one. Now go ahead, open your favorite browser and go to the official website of Fedora 34 and download the latest version. Now by the time of recording this video, Fedora 34 is the latest version. Go ahead and choose the Fedora workstation to install a desktop PC or laptop. Next up, you need to go to this website and download this tool that helps us to create a bootable drive. Now it's time to create a partition for Fedora 34. To do so, Right click on the Windows logo, then choose Run and type a disk mgmt.msc. Now, this will open a disk manager on Windows where you can list all of the connected drives along with their partitions. Now, as you can see in my case, only one drive is connected. The drive 0 has uh, two partitions only. We're going to use a drive 0 where Windows 10 has been installed and shrink the free volume. Now choose any partition from here to allocate a free space. Now in my case, I will shrink from the last partition which is a C drive and in your case it might be a D, E or F or whatever. Just choose the partition and right click. Now choose a shrink volume option and allocate a max of 25 GB or higher for Fedora 34. You can type the value in megabytes. Now in my case, I'm going to allocate a 80,000 megabytes, which is equals to 80 GB of free space, and click on Shrink. Now this will create an unallocated partition. Now that's it, we have done creating a partition for Fedora. Now once it's done downloading all of the files, place it somewhere on your computer for easier navigation. Now go ahead and connect the USB drive to PC or laptop and open Balina Etcher. Now inside a Balina Etcher, import the ISO file and look for a Fedora 34 image file. Then select the drive. In my case, I have an external SSD. I'm going to go ahead and select this. 
Now go ahead and click on flash and it may start creating a bootable USB with Fedora 34. Now sit back and relax. The process will take some time depending on the writing speeds of your pen drive or SSD. Now it's time to start an installation that takes us to step number four. Now go ahead and reboot your computer. While your PC is rebooting, press the F2 or delete key to enter into a BIOS mode. Now inside BIOS mode, you need to turn off a secure boot if it's enabled. I'm going to choose the boot section and look for a secure boot and disable this option. Now once it's done, save the changes and reboot the computer. Now while it's rebooting, Hold the F10 or F12 key on your keyboard to open the boot menu. Now here you can select the drive name. Now in this case it is showing my drive as a transcend and I'm gonna choose this option to boot a Fedora installer. You can only use this a boot menu option if your USB drive is not automatically booting into the Fedora setup. Now here choose a test and start Fedora option. Now you can see the live setup has started. Here choose a install Fedora option. Now keep in mind this is a live session, meaning you can use a Fedora to try before proceeding to install. So feel free to explore. Now anyway, the install option will launch an Anaconda installer. Now go ahead and choose your keyboard language then select time and date and set your time zone. Now select the installation destination option. Here you can see all the drives connected to the PC. Now in my case I have only one internal SSD which is this one. Go ahead and select your drive and choose the custom option. Now we are going to create a partitions for a Fedora manually. Now this will take us to this page. Now here you can see the free space which we have allocated in Windows is showing. I'm going to create a three partitions, the boot EFI, root and swap. You can also use a home partition if you need it so. Now anyway, let's start creating the first partition. To do so, click on this a plus button at the bottom left. Then choose the mount point option as boot forward slash EFI. And under the desired capacity, allocate a 1 gig of free space for this partition. Now this is going to install a grub bootloader. I won't damage any windows bootloader. Now once it's done, time to create the main partition root. Now again click on the plus button. Now choose the mounting point as forward slash. And desired capacity is going to be a 70 gigabytes for root. You can also create the home partition the same way. And lastly, we need to set up a swap partition. Go ahead, click on a plus 
and set the mounting point as a swap area and the desired capacity. Now I will set the rest of the free space for swap. That's it, now we have done creating a three partitions that are essential for every Linux distro. Now if you notice here the default root partition uses a BTRFS file system and the rest of the other partitions are set to be using a standard partition. Now go ahead click on done and accept the changes. Now time to start installing Fedora 34. Go ahead click on the installation option. Now keep in mind while it's installing you can play with the Fedora live setup so go ahead or watch some videos or explore the user interface of Fedora 34. The installation process will take some time depending on the speed of your SSD or internal hard drives. Now that's it guys, the installation has been finished successfully. Go ahead and reboot the computer. While it's rebooting, go ahead and eject the USB drive. Now as you can see it has boot into the grub bootloader. From here you can either boot into a Windows 10 or Fedora 34. Let's go ahead for now, I'm going to choose to boot into a Fedora. Now as you can see the Fedora has booted successfully, go ahead and create a user account to launch the GNOME session. And that's it, now you can see Fedora has been running successfully. This is how you do boot Fedora 34 along the side with Windows 10. Now as a bonus part of this video, if in case you don't like Fedora 34 and decided to uninstall, then boot back to the Windows OS. Now open a disk manager by typing this command inside the run dialog box. Now here in my case and next to the C drive, there are three partitions are showing which I need to delete each partition one after the other. So make sure you are deleting the correct partitions. Now as you can see I have done deleting a two partitions which were root and a swap but there is no option to delete the boot EFI partition. It's expected and we're gonna take a command prompt help to remove this partition. To do so, go ahead open a command prompt and run as administrator. Now inside the CMD type disk part then type list disk. 
Now this will show all the drives connected to my PC. Now as you can see drive 0 is the only drive connected to my computer where windows are present. I'm gonna go ahead and select this drive by typing a select disk 0. Now I'm gonna type the list partition to view all of the partitions of this drive. Now if you notice carefully partition 4 is the boot partition which we failed to delete from the disk manager which is this one. Now as you can see it's around a 1000 megabytes. Now we're gonna go ahead and delete this partition. To do so type this command to select this partition and make sure you have selected the proper partition. Now type assign letter is equals to x to mount this partition. Then type this command to delete it permanently. Now as you can see under the disk manager it's now deleted and we gain back a free space. You can use this free space and merge back to your windows. Now that's it, now we have successfully removed a Fedora 34 from Do Boot. If you restart your computer, it should boot your system directly into a Windows 10 and you won't face any grub issues. Now this is how you properly set up a Do Boot on your Windows computer with Fedora 34. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. So if in case you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down there. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and consider clicking the bell button to get notified whenever I post a new video. Thanks for watching this video. It's been KSK Ryle. I'll catch you in my next one. Peace.